What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Paradise Valley. This is episode number five. In this episode, as you can see by the title, we are starting work on a couple of new casinos. Jumping right into the time lapse, you can see that I'm working on this interstate ramp. And this will serve as the main exit into the new development. And I'm probably gonna cut a lot of this out because I don't really like working on roads and interstates. I feel like I did a, a little bit better with this one, but again, I didn't add a, a lot of detail or anything to it. So right there, you just saw me place the, I believe the London Eye Ferris wheel, and that's to represent the high roller Ferris wheel in Las Vegas, which opened in 2014. It's the largest Ferris wheel in the world. I kind of wish this version was a tad bit bigger, and there may be bigger versions on the workshop, but they wouldn't be animated like the vanilla version. Also in front of the, the Ferris wheel, I started working on a pedestrian promenade. Later I replaced the old pedestrian street from NXT2 with one of the newer cobblestone roads on the workshop. 
and I believe I spend more time on that later on in the time lapse. So the next casino that I have planned working on is the Flamingo Casino and the Link Casino, which are on the other side of the strip across from the Mirage. And when I started placing buildings for the Flamingo, which I'm renaming the Pink Diamond Casino after one of my favorite slot machines. And I knew I wanted to use the Rio Grande Casino as the floor or base for it. It's one of the first casinos on the workshop, but it's much too small to stand on its own on the strip. So I'm using that as well as the luxury boutique assets and the Fahrenheit Club as the first floor base for this casino. And later I add some towers, which are just smaller versions of the Oasis towers that I made. For the pedestrian shopping mall, I'm using some of the town center modular shopping center buildings, which I created. And I really believe this is my first time actually using these assets. I can't really remember using them before. I'm using those assets along with, um, I think this is a vanilla asset and some of Avanya's industrial loft buildings. I don't really know how long ago it was that I created some of these shopping center buildings, but they have a really thick sidewalk in front of them. And I really didn't like that for what I was going for here. Uh, I think you'll see me later on, either later in this episode or the next episode, you'll see me lower those buildings to get rid of the sidewalk that's in front of them. And then placing decals later. For the casino next door to the Flamingo, in real life, I think it's actually kind of uh, attached to the Flamingo. But for that casino, I just started playing around with some random buildings and props. And it wasn't anything that I was going to spend a whole lot of time on. But after I added the villas at Amar City, which I built and named after Amar City, a Skyline series by Silverette, I thought it would be cool to name the entire casino the Amar City Hotel and Casino and give it somewhat of a Middle Eastern theme. I'm using some glass props and a glass skyline mall prop to really give it a, a modern look along with some art deco buildings from the art deco pack. For the main entrance to the casino, since it's not actually a building itself, I use the entrance from the Oasis Hotel and Casino, which is a separate entrance prop that I created. And I'll be releasing that once I upload the standalone Oasis Towers that you can place without having to place the entire complex. I'm using the red paving decal and I believe Silverette used this one extensively in Armar City. It was like one of the first decals that appeared on the workshop by Bo Farmer. If, if you watch any CD Skyline series on YouTube before, then you've seen this decal placed and used a lot. And I have one comment on one of my assets on the Steam Workshop. And they asked me what decal was I using in one of my screenshots. And I was just like, really? Like, everybody and their mama have this decal. Uh, but sometimes I have to keep in mind that the game is approaching almost three years now. And a lot of players may not be familiar with a lot of the older assets and mods that have appeared on the workshop. I'm also using this red concrete planner that I created for the Macy's asset originally. And I, I think one of the first times I saw this used was by Flux in Rhinestone Allen. I personally don't really care for it that much myself, but I think it's a, a nice throwback. I'm also using this glass fence that I created, which I initially didn't like either, but it started to grow on me. And looking at the video now, I see that I see some of the uh, Sims walking through the planters and the trees. So I, hopefully I move these planters. Yeah, you can see me moving the planters right now uh, just to allow the Sims to pass through without clipping. What you're seeing on the time lapse right now, I just recorded this a couple of days ago, uh, but the episode is really kind of a mixed bag when it comes to the timeline that I recorded this in. The interstate that you saw me 
working on at the beginning of the series was created probably about six weeks ago. Um, I actually finished that before recording the fourth episode of Paradise Valley, uh, which was kind of a break in terms of working on the casinos. But the majority of the time lapse was recorded uh, probably about two or three weeks ago, definitely before the last couple of episodes of Bluff City. And I had a lot of problems recording, and so I lost a lot of footage. And so when I went to put this episode together, I only had about five or six minutes of time lapse. So I decided to go back and add more detail. And I was adding this detail just so I can get some more footage and extend the length of this episode. But in hindsight, I'm really glad that I spent a little more extra time uh, detailing it because I, I feel like it really paid off in the end and it just added so much more to what I already had. Even with that, this episode is still a little on the shorter side. So I'm just trying to add a little more detail to the roof area and uh, the pools. I'm also adding some advertising to the outside of the building. And I feel like I might have went a little overboard. I feel like it kind of ends up looking more like Times Square than Las Vegas. So I may go back and remove some of that later on. But I don't know. We'll see how things develop. You might also catch a couple of glimpses of me using some of these pedestrian decks. And I use some of the invisible pedestrian paths to create a, uh, a walkway across the strip. And I'm not really sure how that's gonna turn out. I cut a lot of the footage out of this episode. So right now I'm not 100% sold on the idea. I'm just really not sure if I wanna dedicate that much time and effort. So the final part of the time lapse for this episode it's actually recorded after I started working on the next episode and I try to kind of tape around that. So in the next episode, you'll see me working on the Pink Diamond Casino and a lot of the foliage and ground around that. Also, you'll see me uh, placing the Link Hotel and Casino, uh, which is a custom asset that I'm doing specifically for uh, that episode. So I definitely feel like things are really shaping up now with having different casinos and not just having all the activity focused on the same two casinos. And overall, I had a, a really great experience designing and creating this casino, especially since I did not create any custom buildings for it. You see right there, I did create a custom Armar City sign, but it's definitely different for me to not create any custom building specifically for the casino and I always appreciate it uh, just using some of the existing assets to create something different not basing this on a real-life casino really allowed me uh, a lot of freedom and opportunity for creativity in putting all of this together That's also one of the reasons why you see me using alternate names for some of the casinos and resorts that I'm building. It's just because I don't want to feel tied down or obligated to try to recreate something or stay true to the original version when I can really take elements from whatever I'm trying to recreate and make it my own and really get creative with it. That's what I feel like this game is about now at this point is really being able to take the different assets and tools and really being able to express yourself creatively with it. So that's gonna wrap it up for me for this episode. So if you did enjoy this episode, please go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps a lot. I really don't know how it helps, but everybody else says it. So just go ahead and do it. And consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see all of y'all in the next episode.